It's not unusual for Chef Ramsay to chew out contestants during the signature dish challenge, but these? These were absolutely pathetic. As our first entry, we're gonna discuss a dish presented by a culinary instructor that looked like soaked diapers. Colleen Cleek, who was featured in the fifth season of the show, ranked in 12th place. During the signature dish challenge, Cleek was the 11th contestant to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. When Chef Ramsay picked up her dish, there was only one thing that came to mind, and it was diapers. When he asked who made it, Cleek spoke up and explained that she created smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream. Soon after, she gave some more information about herself and added that she owned her own recreational cooking school. But when Chef Ramsay asked her if she was a trained chef before she even set up this school, Cleek simply denied it. Chef Ramsay was later shocked to learn that she charged 300 bucks for 3-4 to four hours of lessons. That's a lot. For someone who was a culinary instructor, Cleek's dish didn't really demonstrate that. And just take a look at that dish's size. The signature dish challenge is meant for sampling, not to feed the entire neighborhood. Anyway, Cleek gave a lame excuse about the portion size, claiming that she was used to feeding big Nebraska boys. But did the dish at least taste good? Absolutely not. Chef Ramsay spat the food out as soon as he took his first bite. Was Cleek actually charging people 300 bucks to teach them how to make garbage? Chef Ramsay was so appalled by her dish that the only thing he could manage to say was this. You seriously charge $300 to teach people how to make that crap? I feel like I need some plastic wrap on my ass. Offended by Chef Ramsay's critique, Cleek retaliated by saying that she also taught manners. The famous chef couldn't believe his ears. Was this woman actually trying to pull his leg or was she just dumb? Well, she did manage to piss him off, that's for sure. But Chef Ramsay dismissed her in the most classic way by saying this. I teach manners too, chef. Okay, please, miss manners, f***ing in line. While it wasn't just Cleeks' dish, but also her attitude that sucked, this next contestant served mashed potatoes topped with sugar. What? Who does that? Well, meet Carrie Keep. Keep debuted in the ninth season, where she ranked in 8th place. During the signature dish challenge, Keep was the first one to get her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. She ended up going against Will Lusberg. Keep served chicken fried ribeye with mashed potatoes and white truffle cream gravy. She then revealed that she added sugar to the mashed potatoes, which left Chef Ramsay in dismay. Keep then explained that her mother always made it that way and requested that the famous chef try it. She was so convinced that Chef Ramsay would love it and compared the experience of eating it to an orgasm. However, Chef Ramsay's reaction was just the opposite. The only thing he felt like doing was this. It is a chicken fried ribeye with Yukon gold mash and white truffle cream gravy. I actually have a little sugar in there. Stop, say that again. Just try it. Oh. From there on, Keep's performance on Hell's Kitchen was mediocre. She failed several challenges, and her constant talk about being hot and attractive annoyed many viewers. She even talked back to the guest judges on the sixth day during the 20-year reunion challenge. I think the guacamole is a little bit overpowering. We That's can all I that. tasted. Yeah, we can light up on that. Can we shut the it's quite surprising how Keep made it all the way to the 10th episode with a foul mouth like that, but this next contestant was labeled to be the worst of the worst. It'd be a shame not to feature this man's signature dish. He was the type of person who can mess up a simple pancake. We're, of course, referring to Raj Branston from the 8th season. During the signature dish challenge, Branston was the 8th and final person to get his dish judged by Chef Ramsay. He was put up against Sabrina Brimhall, but the dish didn't look anything like a pancake. This might have been the first time Chef Ramsay was served something like this, and he was clearly in shock. Not only was the dish a mess, but since it had so much oil, it looked like the pancakes were taking a piss. Kudos to Chef Ramsay for trying something as disgusting as that. When he finally tasted it, Branson was deemed to be one of the worst chefs on Hell's Kitchen. This guy was so slow and confused that he frustrated the famous chef beyond belief. Due to his poor skills, Branson was only able to make it to the third episode before being booted out of the competition. While Branson will go down in history as one of the worst yet most memorable contestants on Hell's Kitchen, this next contestant was so lazy that you could tell from the get-go. Lacey D'Angelo, who was featured in the 5th season, ranked in 9th place. During the signature dish challenge, D'Angelo was the 5th person to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. She presented a chicken and blackberry sauce dish. Upon seeing the dish, Chef Ramsay inquired about where it came from. Apparently, she said it came from her workplace, a corporate dining buffet-style restaurant. After tasting it though, Chef Ramsay immediately spat it out and said this. Chicken and blackberries, where did that come from? Where's work? I do corporate dining. Like a restaurant, is it? Um, it's a buffet style restaurant. You serve, they eat. Straight after, they vomit. Well, you could learn a lot about a chef from their signature dish. And D'Angelo came across as a lousy chef who whined about almost everything. This was spot on since on the very first day, when her team was working hard during the service, D'Angelo just threw that all away. 
Right in the middle of things, she felt so overwhelmed that she felt the need to say this. I, I quit, you guys. What? Honestly, I'm not sure how she made it to the 8th episode with such a sour attitude. But, on the other hand, this contestant had the weirdest inspiration for her signature dish. In the 14th season, viewers were introduced to Chris Schmirler. During the signature dish challenge, Schmirler was the 6th person from the red team to present her dish. She ended up going against Michael Dussault. Schmirler presented a ginger-crusted chicken breast and revealed that she was inspired by something that you would never think of. Jeff Ramsey couldn't help but laugh when Schmirler said that she drew inspiration from the grocery store's cookie aisle. The famous chef was glad that Schmirler wasn't inspired by the pet aisle, in which case we couldn't imagine what the outcome would be. Jeff Ramsey braced himself to taste Schmirler's dish, and just as he put it in his mouth, this is what he did. That is ginger-crusted chicken. I was in the cookie aisle, I was trying to get ideas, and I have ginger cookies. I'm glad you were inspired in the cookie aisle, not the <laughs> pet food aisle. Oh. oh, really? Oh no, oh my god, really? That is hideous. Sorry. Schmirler was clearly a lost soul, and this was clear from her performance. She was unfocused, very confused, and also made a mess of the tickets. Things got so bad that the red team was eventually kicked out of the kitchen and Schmirler was booted from the show. Schmirler was the first contestant to be eliminated that season, but this next contestant served an entire pumpkin as it was and didn't even bother to season it. We're talking about Luis Petroza, the runner-up of season 4. Now, Petroza fans, please don't berate us for having Petroza's dish on this list. You kind of have to agree though that for someone of his caliber, we're surprised that he served a dish like this. He claimed that he had no particular specialty since he was well-rounded, but this dish showed otherwise. Petroza's dish left Chef Ramsay feeling really confused since it was an entire pumpkin on a greasy dish. When the famous chef picked the pumpkin up, it was literally dripping. Chef Ramsay trashed the potatoes because, come on, how can you eat something like that? Petroza then revealed that it was a table-side dish and opened the pumpkin to reveal a chicken hidden inside. Sadly though, Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed. The chicken was so dry, the pumpkin wasn't seasoned right, and the only thing that Chef Ramsay wanted to do was this. There's um, a Cornish hen inside. Chef. A Cornish hen? These are potatoes. And how much grease and fat and oil did you fry in? So what's the uh, dish called? Hen in a pumpkin. Right now, looking at that mess, I'd like to stick your f head in there, you know that. But again, Petroza was one of Hell's Kitchen's humblest and greatest chefs. He consistently scored high points when it came to his cooking, attitude, leadership, and collaborative skills. However, this talented chef is no longer with us, but he did leave us with some memorable moments. This next contestant though presented an exotic dish that could only be imagined by someone who's high. Matt Sigil, who was in the 5th season, ranked in 6th place. During the signature dish challenge, Sigil was the 6th person to get his dish judged by Chef Ramsay. When Sigil presented his dish, he believed that it would stand out and live up to Chef Ramsay's expectations. Well, it looks like it did stand out, but for different reasons. He served Chef Ramsay his exotic tartare, which consisted of raw venison, diverse scallops, caviar, and grated chocolate. The famous chef was shocked to hear the combination of ingredients. Like, who the hell mixes caviar with white chocolate? Chef Ramsay couldn't contain himself and asked this. I call it exotic tartare. It's with venison and diverse scallops, with caviar and white chocolate. Do you smoke? Cigarettes? No. After tasting the dish, Chef Ramsay couldn't stop throwing up. This was indeed a gut-wrenching dish. While this was the worst combination of ingredients Chef Ramsay has ever seen, this next contestant served gumbo that made everyone throw up. During the signature dish challenge in the 8th season, Antonia Borgman was the third person to have her dish judged by Chef Ramsay. She ended up going against Louis Curtis. Borgman made a Mardi Gras gumbo, and when she lifted up the lid, Chef Ramsay was appalled with what he saw. It looked like diarrhea. She stated that everyone loved her gumbo, but when Chef Ramsay tasted it, he did this. It's a uh, Mardi Gras gumbo. Oh, God. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Are you crazy? Have you tasted that? No, I didn't get a chance to taste it, Chef. <coughs> when Chef Ramsay asked her if she tasted her dish before plating it, Borgman said that she didn't have enough time as an excuse. But guys, we have all the time in the world to keep you entertained. We're going to keep pushing out exciting content on the channel, but we need your support. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, what did Chef Ramsay do with the gumbo? He asked all the other contestants to taste her dish when Borgman sarcastically asked them to throw it all away. There was not one person who didn't gag after tasting it. Rob McHugh called it repulsive, Nana Sively and Boris Polshuk were close to throwing up, and Vinnie Accardi compared the dish to a big bowl of mud. And poor Chef Ramsay, he threw up more than two times. Thank God we never got to see Borgman in action, since the very next day she had some health complications and quit. So, can you think of any other signature dishes that made Chef Ramsay throw up? Let us know in the comments section down below. 
That must be one of the worst combinations I've ever tasted in 21 years of cooking. So we've definitely seen our fair share of clumsy ideas and clumsier executions in this competition, but this one was made with way too much overconfidence. Chef Ramsay is gonna love it because it's delicious. That's Carrie Keep talking about her chicken fried ribeye, served with creamy mashed potatoes, and to top it all off, a fancy white truffle cream gravy. Sounds pretty good, right? More like too good to be true. Because in the end, Carrie had a confession to make. I actually have a little sugar in there. Stop, say that again. Now, it's not difficult to tell how Chef Ramsay's feeling by looking at his face. You can see how he went from curiosity to complete disbelief in no time flat. I bet Carrie couldn't have expected the fallout that resulted after she said this. Chef Ramsay is gonna love it because it's delicious. But alas, Chef Ramsay didn't come to the same conclusion. Nowhere near, actually. There was definitely some false advertising going on here. And the only thing left to do was spit it out and call it for what it was. That is disgusting. With that, let's move on to the all-new season of Hell's Kitchen, which is already off to a dramatic start. So, in the signature dish challenge, we met Demir from Philadelphia. He began by stating how important this opportunity was for him to potentially gain some financial security. Coming from where I come from, North Philadelphia, you don't get a lot of opportunity. But would he be able to gain Chef Ramsay's confidence? Well, let's find out. His signature dish was linguine with coconut cream, and let me tell you, it looked absolutely delicious visually. Grilled lobster with coconut curry cream linguine. I definitely eat it, but there was a bit of a problem. Uh, linguine, is it fresh? No. Aw, oh, brother, surely you must have done your homework, right? Did you forget what happened to Monique from season 14 or Kevin from season 15? Oh, and of course, the great Mike Aresta from season 12. He was the fourth contestant from the blue team, ready to face off against Keisha. So he had his dish ready to go, a plate of tortellini with tomatoes, and he was thinking he had it in the bag. But here's where things got a bit cheesy. Turns out the filling for his tortellini was far from fresh. It's a packaged tortellini. You could see the disappointment in Chef Ramsay's eyes. And of course, there was really only one place that the dish belonged after that little revelation, the trash. Now, instead of owning up to his mistake, Mike started to question Chef Ramsay's judgment. I mean, why trash it, right? It couldn't be that bad. It wasn't dog food. Uh, his words, not mine. That's bullshit, bro. What did you just say? But Chef Ramsay immediately called Mike up to the front in response. He wanted an explanation for the outburst, and Mike was totally caught off guard. Dude was at a total loss for words. That's when Chef Ramsay made it clear that there was no place for insubordination or disrespect in his kitchen. Here, here. If you got anything to say to me, say it to my face, not my back. You gotta shut the fuck off. And then, of course, there was also Kimberly from season 16, the executive chef and catering manager of a Latin infused sushi restaurant. Latin infused yep, sushi? We do Latin infused sushi. Yeah, believe me, Chef Ramsay was as confused as the rest of us probably were. He was probably gearing up for some Japanese inspired dish, but Kimberly had other plans. What was her dish, you ask? Some del pasta, clams, and a vibrant tomatoey sauce that practically screamed flavor. It all sounded promising, didn't it? Sadly, it didn't live up to the expectations. Chef Ramsay took one look at Kimberly's dish and let it rip. The whole thing was a disaster. But why was this the case? Well, just watch this. Homemade pasta? No, unfortunately not. Obviously fresh clams. I used one can of canned clam. So it should go without saying that she probably walked away with just one point after this mess, right? Now, let's get back to Demir. The flavor profile of his dish was far from redeemable, too. No, I'm not around because the lobsters just taste bland. Chef Ramsay asked Carmen, his opponent, to taste the dish and rate it while he was at it. Carmen gave it a disappointing two. You're missing salt. He's not only missing salt, he's allergic to salt. Damn, that was unnecessarily humiliating. But did Chef Ramsay agree with Carmen's evaluation? Yeah, he wasn't one bit impressed. Well, I think you're generous. For me, it's a one. Demir, predictably, was given the lowest score in that challenge. He should have heeded the wise words of Devin. You gotta be better than that. If you use box pasta, you've just disrespected Chef Ramsay. Amen. But hey, if we've learned anything from Hell's Kitchen, it's that the signature dish challenge isn't the be-all end-all of how far any given contestant is gonna go. We had Latasha in season 13 with her grilled watermelon, who ended up as the winner. We have Danny, who was uh, politely asked to shove the grilled bananas up his ass. And, of course, there was Petroza's funny little Halloween scare. But none could compare to the Season 7 winner, Holly Ugalt. She was the second contestant from the red team to face Chef Ramsay's judgment, and she was up against Benjamin. 
Her dish was a banana leaf wrapped halibut, which sounds fine on paper I guess, but Chef Ramsay's reaction was nothing short of shocking. The famous chef immediately trashed the banana leaf, which put her on the defensive. She claimed that it was a classic northern Indian dish. But Chef Ramsay, hearkening back to his own extensive experiences in India, told her that he'd never seen food anywhere near what she'd given him anywhere near India. I've been to India. I haven't seen food like that. Things took a turn for the worse when the famous chef took a bite and promptly spat it out. Cultural touchstone or not, the flavor wasn't doing her any favors. Holly, that was a disaster. Despite the rocky start, it was an absolute delight watching her journey to the very top. It'll be so fun to follow Demir's arc on the show and see if he uses this setback as fuel to fly to the top. I'm rooting for you, brother. Now, let's do a little fun quiz. Let's put your HK knowledge to the test. I'll describe a menu of some of the most unappetizing dishes served, and you have to name the contestant who made them. Are you ready? Okay, so number one. This dish can best be described as a plate of liquid shit, one that made Chef Ramsay violently puke it out. <coughs> Fucking hell. Here's a little additional hint. Viewers are convinced that the maker of this dish was so embarrassed about it that she quit by faking a medical emergency. Either that, or she suffered a panic attack. Number two on the menu is a pan-seared chicken breast stuffed with portobello mushrooms and goat cheese that was overcooked on the outside and raw on the inside. Excuse me. Third is poached lobster tail with portobello mushrooms. Its creator flirted with Chef Ramsay during its presentation, but to no avail since it was thrown in the trash for being absolutely pathetic. Here's a little hint, the lobster tail was missing. Where's the f***ing tail? Fourth up is a dish served by the oldest competitor in the history of the show. It was veal stuffed with prosciutto and gruyere in tomato sauce. The presentation initially shocked Chef Ramsay, but it ended up being cooked to perfection. It's cooked to perfection. So, how did you do? Let me know in the comment section down below whether or not you got them all right. Now, this next chef was pretty forgettable, except for his hilarious performance in the first challenge. You see, JP was pretty speedy in the kitchen. He wrapped up his cooking a whopping 20 minutes before the time was up. But when Chef Ramsay heard about it, he was shocked. What is this? You've got just under 15 minutes to go. I'll keep it hot. You'll keep it hot? JP wasn't convinced that Chef Ramsay's cynicism was warranted. He just kept saying that he could keep the dish warm and ready to go. But the famous chef warned him that it was doomed to become a sad, overcooked mess if he tried to do that. So reluctantly, he decided to start from scratch. Fast forward to the judging phase, and JP was the second contestant up, going head to head with Shade. Before even taking a single bite, Chef Ramsay busted out his inner detective on JP. He grilled him about whether he had genuinely made an entirely new dish after wrapping things up so early the first time, and JP confirmed that he did. With that revelation hanging in the air, JP displayed his creation. It was a Boston baked haddock paired with fingerling potatoes, haricot vert, and a zesty lemon beurre blanc sauce. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, Chef Ramsay really wasn't in a forgiving mood that day. He tore into the dish, calling out how dry the fish was, how hard the potatoes were, and, well, hear this for yourself. Potatoes are solid, and that looks like something out of the 1970s. The famous chef really didn't stop there, though. He made sure to remind JP that he was the only chef who had to cook his dish twice, which was a huge mark against him. I'm struggling whether to let you come to Hell's Kitchen or send you home. And to rub some salt into his wound, he gave JP's dish a pitiful score of just 1 out of 5. But have you ever come across a contestant who wants to transport Chef Ramsay into a different world through their dish? Well, there's probably a pretty long list, but the first person who comes to mind for me is this guy. He's gonna be in that orgasm, like the zen mode. That's Garav, hoping that Chef Ramsay would feel the ultimate zen after taking his first bite of his signature dish, Duca crusted tuna steak, paired with pepper rice. So what did Chef Ramsay do? He decided to enlighten him. What a big disappointment. Disgusting. That was rough. But like Zen Masters would probably tell him, you gotta chill, homie, and just let that shit go. Now, here comes another contestant whose dish came close to Garab's catastrophe. Jamie from Season 7 was excited to present her creamy chicken kiev, complete with brown rice and asparagus. She genuinely thought that this was her moment to shine. But the famous chef spotted something amiss. That is the toothpick. A pesky toothpick of all things sticking right out of the dish. This obviously completely put Chef Ramsay off it. I'm not even gonna taste it. And fair enough. I wouldn't want to taste something made so negligently either. But guess what? Her opponent didn't really do well either. 
Scott brought his Doug Bress accompanied by parsnip puree up, alongside some sort of politician type speech with them. It'll be a struggle for me to be a cook amongst other cooks because I've become accustomed to being a chef amongst cooks. Yeah, okay, we get it. But surprise, surprise, his dish didn't have a single appetizing element in it. There's not one appetizing ingredient. Naturally, neither Jamie nor he managed to score any points in this round. Now, Joanna from Season 3 had quite the winning strategy up her sleeve, didn't she? Yeah, she was the one who nearly served rancid crab to a customer. I'll flirt, I'll manipulate, I'll be able to get what I want out of Chef Ramsay. Now, let's see how that went down. Her dish was a parmesan crusted chicken with whole wheat spaghetti and a raspberry bellini. But Chef Ramsay, well, he didn't buy into her charm. He took one look at her dish, handed her the bellini, and then... There we go. But wait, what about the dish? What have you done to that? It was drier than my humor and saltier than most of the comments you've been dropping lately. The chicken's dry. Salty, salty, dry. Take your drink back, thank you. Talk about a bad start. But here comes the next contestant who has not one, but two runs in the world of HK. There's no denying that Robin in All Stars was a little more tolerable than her original appearance in Season 10. But what do you think? Despite that though, it still doesn't make any sense how she got the black jacket over Geo. Anyway, her performance during Season 17's Signature Dish Challenge was downright hilarious. Actually, it's performance art. She should title it something like, hmm, how I overestimate my skills every time. She strolled up to the plate with all the confidence in the world, absolutely convinced that she was about to dazzle everyone. Behold, her grand creation, the pan-seared salmon complete with what she claimed was crispy skin, alongside a cauliflower puree. I'm not worried. I've got this. It's all about taking Chef Ramsay took one bite and the disappointment was palpable. That so-called crispy skin? Well, it was about as crispy as a wet napkin. The famous chef wasn't content with merely his own verdict, so he graciously offered a piece to Benjamin, and they both came to the same splendid consensus. Extremely salty. And now, it was time for Chef Ramsay to reveal the score. One out of five. Oh. Oh. It was disgusting. She brutal. Up next, let's head over to the third round of the challenge in season 11, which, let me remind you, was pretty insane. Susan stepped up to face Jeremy, who confidently served a smoked gouda and onion stuffed steak with mashed potatoes. But Chef Ramsay wasn't convinced. He immediately kicked things off with some questions. First off, he wanted to know Jeremy's job, to which he responded with lead cook. Hmm. Then came the big question about his dish. What was it? A ribeye? Jeremy hesitated before going back and forth and eventually setting on a tentative, I believe it is? A quote-unquote lead chef that can't tell one steak from another? Well, Chef Ramsay didn't appreciate his cluelessness. Now, it was Susan's turn. She probably presented her lamb and couscous, but Chef Ramsay had a rather unusual question up his sleeve. And, well, the famous chef's roast wasn't over yet. He took a bite of the couscous and promptly spat it out. Yeah, Chef Ramsay wasn't in the mood to eat overcooked garbage. Well, he never is, but you get my point. He asked Susan if she found the situation amazing, to which she quietly shook her head. In the end, neither of them managed to score even a single point. By the way, we also had douchebag Dan this season, who had the audacity to kind of compare his dish to one of the biggest ever culinary legends. How did you make the uh, hollandaise? Uh, I used whole butter. It's good enough for Julia Childs. It's good enough for me. The audacity, I tell you. He served eggs benedict, complete with champagne hollandaise sauce, tomatoes, and sautéed spinach. But the presentation was botched, and Chef Ramsay didn't hesitate to put him in his place. Julie Charles would be turning in her grave right now if she saw that. Damn right she will. Did you throw up on that plate? But up next, Amanda from Season 6 set the bar real low. Before Chef Ramsay could even dive into her dish, she pulled a surprise move that left everyone raising their eyebrows. Two seconds. What's that? Tequila. Yeah, so she just gracefully stepped out of line, determined to snag some tequila shots, all in the hope of sharing one with Chef Ramsay himself. Talk about dreaming big, right? In no time, she was back, tequila shots in hand, ready for what promised to be an interesting twist. As for her dish? She presented margarita French toast with tequila batter. And, well, Chef Ramsay didn't know what to say. I thought you were joking. You're cooking me a slice of toast dipped in egg with... Tequila. To get me drunk. Maybe he should have called her an alcoholic. Now, French toast is known for being pretty quick and easy to whip up, taking all of three minutes. Hell, I probably would have made it faster at home. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, four. 
Give me a lot more. Now, this brings us to a very important question. What the hell was she doing for that whole time? Ah, uh, come on, Amanda. Did you really think you were at a bachelorette party? Well, either way, Chef Ramsay was stunned. Now, during Thomas Henry Poli's signature dish challenge, Chef Ramsay noticed that he was working up quite a sweat and seemed to have quite the knack for self-deprecating humor. I sweat all the time. I'm a schmetzer. Don't worry about that. Well, honestly, I can't say he wasn't funny. But anyway, back to the task at hand. He presented a shrimp scampi paired with a twist, a cooked Caesar salad. Cooked? Wait, is, is that even a thing? Have any of you tried cooked Caesar salad before? I know I haven't, because Chef Ramsay, in all of his years of experience, also had it. First time in my entire life, I've been served a cooked Caesar salad. Yeah, he wasn't too pleased with even the idea of it, revolted even. And that revulsion forced his hand. There you go. As for the shrimp scampi, they met a similar fate. F*** back with Caesar salad. Thank you, Chef. But Tom, to his credit, seemed pretty unshaken. He boldly claimed that he could handle Chef Ramsay's criticism. I'm a man, I can take it, it's no big deal. He wouldn't break my chop. Now, wow, I've got to respect the man's confidence. Most contestants immediately get bitter and angry when faced with criticism half as harsh as Tom faced here. I guess he was prepared for the worst. And he took that resilient attitude of his all the way to 8th place that season. But sadly, he passed away on July 1st of this year. His obituary reads, Tom's highlight was being cast on season 2 of Hell's Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay. And I'm sure being featured on the show meant a lot to him. We'll miss you, Mr. Pauly. So, these were some of the most shocking signature dishes that have ever had the displeasure of crossing Chef Ramsay's plate. Alrighty, so in Season 6, Episode 9, Chef Ramsay introduced the challenge with a little bit of history from his own personal culinary journey. Their base of knowledge reverts back to the French cuisine. They, they started it, right? What he was basically building up to here was the soft and tender French classic craie. While the dish sounds and seems simple on paper, the challenge was anything but. The famous chef first started with a demonstration that would test the creativity of the contestants. And once Ramsay was done, nobody was as sure of themselves as they were when they walked in. Oh dang, I have never done that before. So this will be very interesting. To add on to the challenge, the contestants had to create four different kinds of crepes. One each for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and to top it all off, a dessert. Since the crepe was a canvas that could be filled with a variety of ingredients, the chefs had the liberty to choose what they presented in each category. Now, in the kitchen, there's an array of ingredients. To make things even worse, the contestants would only get 20 minutes to whip up crepes that would impress Chef Ramsay. Now, let me remind you, at this point in the season, there were only 8 chefs remaining and the teams were split into men and women. With 4 people on each team, each one of the contestants were tasked to complete one variety of crepe each, and given the time constraint, there was no margin for error. Decide who's doing what? I'm gonna take lunch. I'll get dinner? Yes, I'm on dessert. Ramsay was all set to test 3 important qualities of the chefs with one challenge. Creativity, technique, and attention to detail. However, once the challenge kicked off, as the heat in the kitchen went up, things were about to go down. You guys, I got cutting boards. While Suzanne was struggling to regain her team's trust after the previous night's disaster, on the other side, the men's team had already started falling apart. Fuck me. How's it going over here? Yeah, it was not as easy as it looked. The blue team desperately tried several attempts at getting their crepes right, but every single time, there was an issue. The paper-thin crepes simply wouldn't peel off the pan. <laughs> Y'all getting anywhere? I'm getting an ugly one. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe his eyes as he watched the contestants struggle across all the stations with disappointment written all over his face. I just couldn't get it to spread right. Van, holy mackerel. With just a few minutes left on the clock, the contestants barely managed to put out the required number of crepes. Plates right here, plates right here, plates right here. Five, four, three, two. But that doesn't mean they were happy about it. Push it around with this cool little stick and voila. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. No voila. Uh-huh, it wasn't just her. None of the contestants were too sure what they'd serve up. And to add to the chaos, Chef Ramsay decided to invite a special judge to join him for the tasting. Belgian palate. Well, I couldn't find a French palate, so I've gone for seventh best. Yup, who better than our very own JP? Anyway, it was time to step forward with the breakfast crepes, and let's see how things went down. Ben and Ariel stepped up with the respective crepes, and although Chef Ramsay praised Ben for his creativity, there was an issue. Unfortunately, your crepe let you down. 
As for Ariel though, her crepe was an instant hit, right from the idea, to the filling, and even the color, both JP and Chef Ramsay were sold. Mm. Very nice. Love the salmon in there. Yeah. How's that for you? And a lovely color as well. There was no doubt here. And the first point was awarded to the women's team, putting them in an early lead. 1-0 to the ladies. Well done. Good job, Ariel. Good job. Good job, Good job Ariel. Go, Ariel. Next up, it was time for the lunch crepes, and this time around, the women's team fell short. As it turns out, Tennille went a little overboard with the spice, and neither JP nor Chef Ramsay could handle the heat. It's very hot in terms of sensation. Very, very hot. It is. Obviously, the men's team had a clean sweep that round and moved on to the dinner crepes. Now this is when bad blood between the chefs started to show. He just wants to know what the fuck is in the crepe. Turns out, Suzanne totally forgot that it wasn't her, but her crepe that should do the talking. And her constant blabbering left Chef Ramsay really confused. Take it to this crazy, you know, level that doesn't represent the crepe very well. Plus, no, that wasn't the end of it. She simply couldn't stop trying to justify what she'd cooked up. I cooked it with the onions, simmered them in stock to create kind of a gravy, if you will. Meanwhile, all the contestants were losing it over the absolutely uncalled for explanation. You saute meat and onions and put it inside a crepe. But was the crepe worth the hype? Seasoning is perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe she didn't have to try so hard after all. The famous chef really couldn't decide which of the crepes were better, so he awarded both teams with one point each. Now, this meant that both teams were left to battle it out with their dessert crepes, and the pressure was running high. When Dave presented his dish, Chef Ramsay was shocked. Wow, holy fuck. Dave, what is that? Ramsay's reaction was enough reason to believe that the men's team had done something terribly wrong. I made a cream cheese and mixed berry flavoring. Dave had not only messed things up for himself, but also for his team. And believe me, there was no coming back from this. Why is it full? of gunk around the outside. It looks like a plate of diarrhea. Oh, brutal. Chef Ramsay was beyond disappointed. He really couldn't figure out why the top eight were struggling so much with the crepes. I asked for a crepe, not a plate of crap. Dave's crepe was so bad that no matter what Sabrina presented, it would still be better than his disaster. And sadly for him, her dish actually turned out to be quite the hit. Mmm, that is delicious. I can see that already in Whistler. While the women headed off for an exquisite French lunch with Chef Ramsay, the men admitted defeat and stayed back to prep both kitchens. Ah, uh, if only David tried better, they wouldn't have to face such an embarrassing loss. But this next challenge from season 13 was pretty easy to screw up. The chefs were required to be as artistic as possible, but in the most minimalistic way. For today's challenge, I want to see pure artistry. Ugh, talk about a real challenge. Just call me Sade Van Gogh. For this challenge, Chef Ramsay was back with another French dish. And this time, the theme was to create this. I'm looking for each of you to create the most stunning amuse bush. Now, if you're one of those wondering what it means, don't worry, because most of the contestants were in the same boat. I never hear what I almost do to you, but after the day, I will know. What's more, the contestants had to whip up two servings of this peculiar dish, having no clue what it was. And guess what? They only had 20 minutes to prepare the dish. As the contestants dashed towards the pantry, Serling was the first to fumble. The dude had absolutely no idea what to make, let alone a starting point. Close my eyes. I hear my fiance saying you can do this, baby. Yep, that's Sterling for you. All these awesome ingredients. I feel like a kid in the candy shop. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, there was a wide variety to pick from. If only they knew what to cook, they could have made a better choice. For now, it was all a guessing game. Creativity, yes. Artistry, maybe. But imagination, a whole lot of it. It's gonna be a small package, but it's gonna be big on flavor. Then Jennifer, who went with spot prawns for her dish, started taking the spotlight. I visualize my dish, and then I just go with it. And I'm usually spot on, so... But what she made out of them will make you question her every move in this challenge. The team leader, Ro, despite having doubts about Jennifer's dish, let it slide because all of her energy was consumed in perfecting her own dish. I really need to focus on my own performance. Meanwhile, the other chefs went ahead with a wild choice of ingredients. Like, what do I even say here? I have not worked with passion fruit a lot, but let me just throw the passion fruit in and see what happens. Uh, Shade, for your own sake, I hope it works out. 
In the meantime, the red team had to drop one dish since they had seven chefs remaining, but only six spots to showcase their dishes. Now, Roe was all for tossing Jennifer's prawn heads out. But just then, Sterling came in with a suggestion. More like a request, actually. I'm be honest, I don't feel confident in my This is messy. With Sterling stepping down, the prawn heads made their way to the tasting, with a worried Roe watching them walk out of the kitchen. And Chef Ramsay had his concerns about the decision, too. How does it taste? It tastes 100. I mean, it tastes good, Chef. Anyway, cut to the tasting, and Tanya, the editor-in-chief for Epicurious, joined Chef Ramsay to judge the dishes presented by both the teams. As the red team stepped up to present their dishes, the pressure was mounting. I'm gonna say four. Four. Three. Thank Good. you, Chef. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. After an impressive start, next up, it was time for Ro to present her dish. Now, Ro was super confident about her dish and had high hopes that Chef Ramsay and Tanya would be fans of her creation. Although, after tasting the dish, things didn't exactly go her way. Uh, finishing salt on top. Unfortunately, what I just had was a mouthful of salt. Neither of the judges were impressed, and now, whole eyes were turned to Jennifer to salvage the situation. However, before presenting the dish, Jennifer took a dig at Ro for her underwhelming performance. Get a grip of reality here, Ro. You suck at creating dishes. Okay, I'm really not sure what Jennifer was gloating about. Her dish literally had a prawn head jutting out of it, and it was supposed to look appetizing to people? Different strokes for different folks, I guess. But it looks like Jennifer was in for a rude awakening regardless. <gasps> that initial reaction from Tanya was more than enough to put Jennifer in her place. I mean, in what world does this look appealing? This might be off-putting to some people. Even Chef Ramsay couldn't help but laugh at the presentation. However, Jennifer stood her ground. She even tried to explain herself, but Tanya wasn't having any of it. Um, I went with a spot prawn, and it seems like everyone's favorite part is sucking the head. So, um... <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, Jennifer's over-the-top creativity backfired, and neither of the judges were impressed with her dish. Let's be honest, not every customer is going to sit down and start sucking the head. <laughs> uh, two. Yeah, they actually didn't even go in for the head. I mean, who in their right mind would, right? With two disappointing dishes, the red team's chances of winning were looking bleak. By the way, did I mention what amuse bush means? Well, this fancy pair of words literally means mouth amuser in French. In simpler words, appetizer. Now, picture Jennifer's dish on your next meal for an appetizer and let me know if you dig in or skip it altogether. I know what I'm picking. Meanwhile, let me walk you over to season 7 when Chef Ramsay came up with a hell of a curveball to shock the top 8 chefs left on the show. Morning guys, chicken gorgonzola, yes? Yeah, so Chef Ramsay had plated a dish for the contestants to taste, and of course, all eight of them were in absolute awe of the dish. I mean, after all, it was Chef Ramsay's creation. But something was amiss. People eat that shit? Yep, Chef Ramsay had simply microwaved frozen food and presented it in a fancy way. And of course, the contestants fell for it. Brunch menu at Clarity's. Now, have a little taste. As the contestants practically started worshipping the microwave dish and dissecting every bit of it, there came a point when Chef Ramsay couldn't keep the act up. Chicken is delicious. Yeah. Obviously, tomatoes lighten up the sauce. Uh -huh. Big, bold spices. You like it. In just a few seconds, all of the chefs had lost their credibility when they were clearly sucking up to Chef Ramsay, who expected them to give honest feedback. However, the famous chef was also disappointed that none of them could figure out that it was frozen food until he made the big reveal. Frozen f***ing food. Ramsay decided to mock the contestants for their exhilarating reviews on the three-month-old cooked chicken dinner. Freshness, vibrance, excitement. And amidst all of that, one chef decided to prove that he was a smartass. But of course, Chef Ramsay wasn't having it. I thought the chicken tasted a little watery. Oh, come on! <laughs> okay, but let's talk about the challenge, shall we? The whole microwave frozen food test led up to the blind taste test. And believe me, Chef Ramsay had absolutely no hope left for any of the contestants. Anyway, Fran, who was super confident that she had a great palate, was put to the test immediately as the first contestant from the red team. She was then pitted against Autumn from the blue team. And just like Chef Ramsay expected, both teams are off to a disappointing start. What is that, please? White cabbage. Oh. However, things were about to get worse. Just you take a look at how Fran's taste buds deceived her in the very next item. Roast beef. Roast beef? Fran's overconfidence had definitely backfired on her, but luckily for being blindfolded and deafened, she really didn't know that she was making a fool out of herself. 
Chef Ramsay then fed the two of them with sweet potato, and yet again, neither of them got it right. Parsnip! Now we're fucked. Another rough day for Fran. Since neither of them had scored a single point so far, it all came down to the final item on the board, coconut. Now, this time, Autumn got it right and finally scored a point for her team. As for Fran, well... What is it? What is it? What is it? I know the flavor. Then tell me. Potato. Oh. Fran lost all of her credibility after this challenge, especially since she couldn't guess something very simple. Chef Ramsay was really disappointed with Fran's performance, and none of her teammates were happy about losing four points in the blink of an eye. Especially Holly. How the fuck can coconut be a potato? God. Fran felt humiliated, but she only had herself to blame for it. She walked back to the line to join the other chefs, and I guess she had a lot to reconsider after that little walk of shame. But in this challenge from season two, things started off on a sour note right from the start. This is the fourth service. This is where we get stronger. Better. During the fourth service, each team had to put out dishes based on customer orders for a successful service. Two more saints, so you got three saints, Jacques, all day. Larger pan will be easier for the risotto. However, the first appetizers were taking way longer than expected thanks to the miscommunication in the red team, and this left Chef Ramsay disappointed. You're waiting for her call, yeah? Called it three times. Meanwhile, in the blue kitchen, Garrett brought out the first set of appetizers and the famous chef didn't waste a moment to chew him out over it. We can't send any food, Garrett. Meanwhile, back in the red kitchen, Rachel ended up serving some stiff risotto and Chef Ramsay lost his cool. Risotto's not stacked up in a mold. It's relaxed on a plate and it flows like lava. While the red team was huddling to send their risottos, the blue team hit a roadblock when Garrett's spaghetti made its way back to the kitchen for being way too cold. It's cold. It's cold. It's too cold. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, the red kitchen was crumbling under the pressure, having sent out just six plates in 45 minutes of service. What enraged Chef Ramsay even more was when Virginia walked up with her dish when Sarah hadn't even started her part yet. I haven't fired it yet. She didn't even start cooking it. She did start cooking it, Chef. Back in the blue kitchen, Garrett was wrapping up the appetizers, and it was now time for Tom to put forward his meat entrees. But to Chef Ramsay's surprise, Tom hadn't even started cooking the quail eggs, but there was something even worse. Hello, what time did I call out the order? An hour ago. Sometime later, when Chef Ramsay asked for the beef wellington, Tom replied that none of it was done. And well, Chef Ramsay came really close to blowing up the entire place. Come on, it's a little too pink. Keith, four minutes, Chef. Four minutes to window, thank you. Chef Ramsay left Tom with a stern warning, and it was Tom's last chance to redeem himself. You. A little pink. During this time, the Red Kitchen was struggling with their own quail dish. And after presenting it to Chef Ramsay, he wasn't happy with the amount of bones left within the dish. Could you look at me as if it's the planet fucking Mars? No, I'm just, I'm trying to understand your procedures. To make matters even worse, on the blue side, Tom had failed to put out even one dish, leading to a whole pileup of orders at his station. Once the famous chef took note of this, Tom finally got what he'd been asking for. Come here, you. You idiot. Me, I'm fucking adding up. When Ramsay's mad, the best thing you could do is shut up and listen. But Tom tried to act smart, and well, Chef Ramsay lost it. That's for that fucking order there! Oh. After that embarrassing moment, Tom went back to his station attempting to salvage something to put out for the service, while Chef Ramsay couldn't snap out of berating him. But Tom, instead of fixing the issue, ended up making it worse. Oh my god. Chef Ramsay couldn't figure out what was so difficult to understand, despite all the crystal clear instructions, and this made him even more furious. But unfortunately, Tom not only charred the pan, but also the food inside of it, and you have to see Chef Ramsay's reaction. Oh my god, leave it, leave it, leave it! Just fucking leave it! Tom was then taken off the meat station, but not before receiving an earful from Chef Ramsay. Chef Ramsay then asked Keith to take over the station and do what needed to be done to have some dishes out for service before the customers started leaving. You got that, Doc? I got it. Listen to me. Clearly, Tom struggled to work in a high-pressure environment, and Hell's Kitchen just wasn't his cup of tea. But if you could think of more times when a single contestant screwed up the entire challenge for everybody involved, then let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. And if you thought this video was crazy, then wait till you see what I got in store for you next.